my dear brothers and sisters i would like to bring the word of god to you today and i pray that it will be a great blessing to you the title of the message that i would like to share with you is forget the past forget the past in the book of isaiah the great prophet isaiah wrote in the 43rd chapter from 18th and 18th 19th verse i would like to read it for you but forget all that it is nothing compared to what i am going to do the lord says but forget all that it is nothing compared to what i am going to do for i am about to do something new see i have already begun do you not see it i will make a pathway through the wilderness i will make a pathway through the wilderness i will create rivers in the dry waste land my dear brothers and sisters the lord god wants us to forget our past failures forget our past mistakes the the past hurts which might be hurting our mind our our spirit our hearts may be bleeding with the past hurts caused by any of the circumstances that you went through any of the people any of the relationships that you went through but today the lord wants us to do something so that he can make rivers to flow in your waste land the one condition the one request that god is requesting you is to forget the past my dear brothers and sisters it is easily said it is it is easy to say to forget the past but it is very difficult practically even in the old testament we can see prophet samuel one of the greatest prophets struggling to forget his past mistake in in the first samuel 16th chapter from the verse 1 i am going to read to you first samuel 16th chapter verse 1 now the lord said to samuel you have mourned long enough for saul i have rejected him as a king of israel so fill your flask with the olive oil and go to bethlehem here you can see prophet samuel is struggling to forgive himself for anointing king saul as a king who will rule over the israelites and now when king saul has gone away from the ways of the law and the prophet samuel was struggling to forgive himself of his past mistake of anointing saul as a king my dear brothers and sisters now god comes to samuel and speaks to him sometimes we think that god will never forgive us for our past mistakes we are so poor we are so weak in our lives in our in our integrity with god and we think that god will never forgive this god will never forget our past mistakes but here you can see a different scenario where god comes to the prophet sam him to move on with his life move on with your anointing because the lord has seen the next king the next king is a shepherd boy but prophet samuel couldn't see that because he was mourning of his past mistake my dear brothers and sisters we have to stop mourning for our past mistakes the blood of jesus christ washes away all our sins all our mistakes all our shortcomings the blood of jesus when you accept it in your life when you apply that in your past life past mistakes it cleanses you clean i would like to assure you that the lord god is faithful to you and his blood has enough power more than enough power to cleanse any of your past mistakes and the lord god asked samuel to do something he asked him to first fill the horn with olive oil and go to a particular place called bethlehem find a man called jesse and who lives there for i have selected one of his sons to be my king my dear brothers and sisters 
Prophet Samuel was given an assignment when he was mourning to go to Bethlehem and find Jesse and also what, giving him a clue of who the next king is going to be. But Samuel asked, how can I do that? If Saul hears that about it, he will kill me. That was a true, genuine fear that Samuel had. And he was interacting that with God. He was saying, King Saul is already monitoring me. If I go somewhere and anoint someone as a king, he will immediately kill me. He will send his soldiers and kill me. I'm being monitored by my enemies, my dear brothers and sisters. You might think the devil is monitoring you, monitoring each and every every move of you and he's trying to attack you in every direction my dear brothers and sisters god gives you a plan a task and shows you the way to escape from the devil's eyes the lord said take a hypho with you the lord replied and say that you have come to make a sacrifice to the lord my dear brothers and sisters See, this is how God gives you the guidance to escape from your enemy's eyes. You might have some excuses not to move on and clinging to your own past mistakes. But now God wants to speak to you into your life and say that there is a way to escape your fear. And that is through the sacrifices that you make to the Lord. The praises that you make to the Lord. May the Lord anoint you in such a way that the fear that is bothering your heart will be removed from, from your heart immediately. The Bible says there is no man who is perfect in this world, my dear brothers and sisters. Romans chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. No one is righteous, not even one. No one is truly wise, no one is seeking God. All have turned away, all have become useless. No one does good, not a single one. My dear brothers and sisters, there is no one who is perfect before God. We are made perfect by the blood of Jesus Christ, by accepting his forgiveness, by the righteousness of Jesus Christ, you are made perfect. And when God sees you, you are perfect, Christ Jesus. May the Lord speak to your heart today. Even in the Old Testament, Again, I would like to quote from Deuteronomy, verse 8. The Bible says the Israelites mourned for the death of Moses for 30 days. There was a discipline among the Israelites that even in mourning, they have to mourn only for 30 days. Such a great prophet, Moses has passed away. But the discipline... That God gave them is that 30 days you mourn and the 31st day you have to start moving on because you have a journey to Canaan. My dear brothers and sisters, Joshua 1 verse 1 and 2, the Lord speaks to Joshua saying, my servant Moses is dead. Now you start moving. Now you start gathering up strength. Now rise up and move on with your life. You have to cross the river Jordan. There are rivers that you have to cross. You can't just sit down. You can't just put your tent where Moses died and you can't live your life there. You have to move on, my dear brothers and sisters. God is calling us to move on in our lives. Not to be tied up with our past failures, losses that we have experienced in our lives. And God is ready to forgive us. Even Paul in the New Testament says in Philipp Philippians chapter 3 verse 13. Brothers and sisters, he says, I do not consider myself yet to be taken hold of it. But one thing I do, he consciously takes a decision. Paul takes a decision. What does he take? What decision does he take? Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. Forgive, forgetting what is behind me and straining toward what is ahead. It might be a strain to move forward, but it is required of the Lord. If God is ready to forgive us, if God is ready to accept us, why can't we forgive us ourselves? Why can't we accept our, our, our past mistakes and get washed by the blood of Jesus Christ? 
and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let your horn be filled with the olive oil of God. Like Prophet Samuel was instructed, my dear brothers and sisters, fill yourself with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and go to Bethlehem. That is where the next king is going to be anointed. That is where your next assignment is. One of the greatest kings of Israel was, was anointed, not because Samuel was, was locking himself in his room and crying and crying and mourning until he died. No. When he was mourning, the Lord gave, God came to him and told him, my eyes have seen the next king. And this shepherd boy, the son, one, one of the sons of Jesse, is going to be a king who will be admired and celebrated across generations. My dear brothers and sisters, greater things are ahead of you. That is exactly what the Bible was that I read to you in Isaiah. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do, the Lord says. And I will make, I will create rivers in the dry land, in the dry wasteland. My dear brothers and sisters, whatever wasteland is in your past, the Lord God is able to create rivers, streams, rivers to flow on that wasteland, on that dry wasteland, and make it make it to flourish. He's ready to do anything for you. Only when you forget your past and move on. May the Lord help you. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.